MSNBC takes you behind the walls of America's most notorious prisons into a world of chaos and danger. Now, the scenes you've never seen. Lock up raw. At any prison, there are essentially two sets of rules. There are the rules of the administration. The other set of rules are the inmates' rules themselves, the convict code. They got their rules, we got ours. The convict code is you don't get in other people's business, you don't let nobody know your business, you don't tell on nobody. You stick with your own race, you don't talk to other people. You might steer at a person, he might consider that a sign of disrespect. Any inmate will tell you that's the set of rules you follow first. On their first morning of shooting at Utah State Prison, the lockup crew entered the Wasatch A cell block, home to some of the prison's most violent convicts. We met a group of inmates playing cards and talking about who really runs the prison. The guards you know, don't run your sections, man. It's all run by, you know, by your inmates. Yeah, they, they pretty much tell what goes on. You know, a guard does your section, but the inmates are pretty much, they don't get along, then they're going to either force them out or they'll get moved. They'll get moved. They'll straight out get told, Chief, you get your ass down another pot and leave it. Hit the butt. Yeah, have your stuff. Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly yeah, what they welcome on the block. Guards are just in there hot, you know. They distribute all the food. They, they mean, they're only in there to make sure nothing major goes on. Other than that, it makes for everything else. Sergeant Danny Herring was one of only two officers assigned to manage the 95 men on Wasatch A that morning. Yeah, they can take the block, but they're not going anywhere. What are they going to do? Um, that really doesn't bother me. It's, I, I really don't have a control issue that way. They let us control and manipulate how they live and what they do. They got their rules, we got ours, you know. There's a code of conduct in here that you got to follow if you want to, you know, make your time easy, you know. You don't rat on people, you know, just all kinds of stuff, you know, you don't do. That code of conduct is the convict code, and the penalties for violating it can be severe. You look up, the fourth deck's pretty high, you know. A lot of people, people take an elevator ride. The problem is there ain't no elevator. The fall doesn't hurt them. It's a sudden stop at the end. Utah State inmate Tony Duran is well-versed in the convict code. He has spent the majority of the past 23 years behind bars for burglary, robbery, and a slew of parole violations. The convict code is a person that carries himself with respect. He doesn't, he only talks to the man when he has to. You know, he don't sit there and kick it with the man. And you don't tell on nobody. You don't let nobody know your business. You don't, you don't get in other people's business. You respect yourself, you respect others around you. But these days, old time inmates like Duran all agree, the convict code is changing. Well, cause the different breed of inmate that's coming to the joint now, you know? You got kids coming in here, you know? Some of them are gangbangers that don't know how to carry themselves. And some of them, they just don't give a shit about respect or nothing like that. We've discovered the proliferation of gangs at every prison we've profiled. And Utah is no exception. But nowhere are prison gangs more powerful, dangerous, and faster growing than in California. And they have added their own ominous chapters to the convict code. You can always spot a guy that's not used to prison, a new inmate. Uh, because he'll come out, he'll wander around, he won't go with his own group, you know, he's just looking. And uh, usually what will happen is uh, uh, one of the gangsters will go over and snatch him up and bring him over and run the, run the game down to him, tell him, hey, this is what you've got to do, this is where you've got to be, you can only hang out with your own people, we don't want to see you talking to people of other races. And uh, that happens real quick, real quick. At San Quentin State Prison, we learned that not only do gangs force most of the prison population into racial segregation, they even draw boundaries on the rec yard. Hey, this is the lower yard, and the inmates segregate themselves out here, uh, the reason being that the gangs want it that way. The blacks are over here, the northern Hispanics is our, our main gang here at San Quentin, and it's because they're better organized. Okay, the white guys are over here on the parallel bars and on the picnic table, over in the corner, you see where the Asians are sitting. You can't just walk and sit on the table. I had to explain that. 
I'd almost gotten a confrontation with that two or three times because you know, I saw a table, I sat down. But it's not like that. You gotta, you gotta ask for, for permission to sit down there. Even such a minor misstep can be taken as a sign of disrespect. And that can lead to widespread violence. Though correctional staff is constantly on the lookout for weapons, it's well known that many on this yard are armed for battle, and none more so than the northern Hispanics. They have a minister of defense, and his thing is he's to have 10 weapons ready at any time down here on this yard. Their weapons are all hid over there, and in the morning we'll come over and we'll search that area and, and try to find their weapons but they're getting better and better at the way they hide their weapons. As you see, this one guy keeps looking around and uh, he's got the heavy coat on. The temperature's pretty hot, so they're, they're the soldiers. They wear these jackets, it's a little bit more armor. If uh, anything goes on, they're the first ones to get involved. Many inmates have told us that if violence does break out, the convict code dictates how they will respond. If it's a racial situation, you have to respond according to your, your race, racial background. You know, if I'm standing next to this man here and he's suddenly attacked by another racial group, even if I don't know him, he's black. I'm obligated by myself to assist this man. You know what I'm saying? If it's a white thing, then, you know, you get in it. If it's with the whites and another race or something, you know, then you got to be a part of it, you know. But if it's something else, I just turn my head. I don't even want to see it, you know. But we found that violence does not only occur between racially segregated rivals, Sometimes, gang violence erupts from within. I've stabbed people because of what I've had to do, you know? I can't go, you can't go against the program. At California State Prison Corcoran, we met one young inmate who was ordered to attack an older, weaker gang member, simply to thin out the herd. He asked that we not use his name. I accepted that because that's the way it is, you know? I didn't question it. You know, some things I was against, but, you know, I just dealt with it and accepted it because that's the way, that's the law of the land in here. He explained that the hit was ordered because the older victim was unable to keep up with the gang's military-style exercise program. He couldn't keep up with the exercise. You know, that was the reason. This is how stupid this is. You know, the, the dumb reasons they have in here. And when I did speak up for him, you know, it was placed on me. Well, since you're speaking up for him, then you'll deal with it. And you dealt with it, because that's what it was about. The older inmate survived the stabbing, and his assailant quit the gang. Finally, I made my stance and went against it. Now I'm a Christian, and I go for that. I wrote him a letter, and I apologized, and I told him uh, that I was sorry that I had to do that. I was so weak, and I didn't, you know, protect him. I should have. You know, I was in a position to protect him, and I didn't. Next, on Lock Up Raw. It's all in a bunch of betrayals and lies. There's no loyalty. There's no honor. One gangbanger smashes the code, and another unleashes contempt for those who do. I don't know how can they wake up in the morning and see themselves in the mirror, you know? The unwritten rules that inmates live by in prison are known as the convict code. But when it comes to gangs, the convict code is the code of silence. Talking about gang business can get members killed. They got rules and we got rules within the rules. I mean, you know, among our own peoples or among different races, you know, but we have to deal with it. I mean,